Not everybody knows how to save a life or what to do when the opportunity arises. Thankfully for Derek Bible's buddy, Derek did. Derek knew how to save a life because of community emergency response training, a FEMA course that he had taken through youth preparedness camps at Texas School Safety Center and at the Oto, Missouri's Young Warrior Teen Cert Camp. A student in Red Rock being honored tonight for saving his teammates life. The Frontier High School boys basketball team was eating dinner together and a teammate started choking on some steak. As Fox 25's David Chasanoff reports, Derek Bible is now being called a local hero. A moment he can't put into words. It means a lot, you know, I'm really, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know. Derek's teammates say he's too humble to accept any kind of recognition. But tonight, the sophomore homecoming escort he saved, Trey Shotton, is showing his appreciation anyways. It made me feel like somebody would actually be there for me. And, uh, give me a lot of respect for Derek. The moment that piece of steak went down the wrong pipe last week, Trey tapped on the homecoming king's leg. And I'm like, well, what's up, bro? And here, uh, he's just, uh, he looks at me, he's just like pointing at his throat and mouth. I'm like, I'm just like, what? And then I just see that there's just th these tears running down his uh, face. And I'm like, oh, dang, he's choking. Derek immediately performed what he learned in a training class, the Heimlich Maneuver. Las Vegas Battle Award presented to Derek Bible. We are proud of you and your, of your heroic actions taken to save the life of a fellow student. Derek's everything you'd expect in a hero. He's a team first guy. He's a, just a great student, great guy. I mean, he's the kind of guy you'd want dating your daughter. Compliments aside, it was a moment the senior will never forget. That was the last thing I expected was to save a life. This podcast goes back a few years. Uh, we had the good fortune to work with the Oto, Missouri, uh, particularly uh, James LeClaire, the Oto, Missouri emergency manager uh, back, oh goodness, many years. But it goes back to uh, 2017 and 2018 when we, FEMA Region 6, contracted with the uh, Texas School Safety Center to bring other partners across the region to the Texas Youth Preparedness Camp, which at that time was the premier and, uh, to our knowledge, one of the only youth preparedness camps around. James LeClaire, uh, out of our tribal partners, was the one that said, yeah, I, I, I want to try that. So he sent, uh, with us supplying invitational travel and, and contracting with Texas School Safety Center, um, numerous youth and, and adults, Ed Hara, uh, uh, goodness, Carolee uh, Pratt, uh, a number of folks, and, and then kids uh, like Derek Bible and Anias Bible and uh, Cahaga Girls, Marlene Enloe, uh, that just numerous um, tribal youth from the Oto, Missouri, to this camp. And they had not been out of the Red Rock area that much. So it really made an impact. And just the travel on top of all the great training they got because they used the community emergency response training uh, uh, curriculum there at the camp. And it, it made an impact that we're feeling today because. James LeClaire, uh, as kind of a tutor to uh, Derek and his family and, and friends there that uh, attended the camp, instituted the CERT curriculum there in Red Rock. So what they learned, they made it theirs. And today we're going to talk to Derek Bible, one of the recipients of that training and someone who has done much with it about what he's done, where he's going, what it means to take that training, what it means to his tribal community, and really what it means to all of us. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Hashtag R6 Prepares podcast. I'm your host, Bill Bischoff, FEMA Region 6 Community Preparedness Officer, and we'll be talking about community preparedness issues that affect Region 6 states of Louisiana, Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and the tribal nations therein. We hope you enjoy the show. Derek Bible, uh, my friend from the Oto, Missouri tribe, 
It is good to have you here today with the hashtag R6 Prepares podcast. Uh, if if we can, I'd like to go back to where where we met. Uh, you're how old now? I am uh, 19 years old right now. 19 years old, and I would say uh, about what? Uh, was it 2017 that I met you and your mom and your sisters and cousins there in, in uh, uh, San Marcos at the Texas Youth Preparedness Camp? Yeah, I say it was that all those years ago. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I th I think you might have been. Years. I think you might have been thirteen at the time, which was probably sneaking in just under the. Uh, you and your sister would have been thirteen, sneaking just in because I think fourteen was the cutoff. But we we slid you on in there anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, there there's been a lot that's happened since then, uh, but back then it was you were there for the youth preparedness camp, Texas Youth Preparedness Camp, and I believe. Y'all did that a couple of years, and um, and if you will, just tell me what you learned back then. <clears throat> well, uh, all those years ago, I really didn't know what I was signing up for. Uh, my mom just told me I was uh, going for this this uh, this camp, really, the CERT camp, uh, you know, com community emergency response team, and uh, I was like, okay, you know, my mom says I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna go, and uh, you know, um, you know, I didn't really know. A lot about it but i'm really glad i went you know i learned a lot of uh, disaster preparedness skills at uh, first aid training search and rescue and uh i also met a lot of cool people and um you know uh, that was just my first year the second year i went the following year uh, we also brought a couple more people from uh following tribes and stuff like that and uh, i just really basically just you know try to sharpen my skills i got there my first aid mainly i thought really the first aid would come in handy a lot and it has it has and um, well, well, the search and rescue, everything, I just tried to sharpen my skills as best I could. And yeah. um, I tried to bring all that back to my tribe. Yeah, and you did in a big way. Could you talk, because it came to me just, a, I, I want to say a couple of months ago, uh, word came back to me all the way from, you're, you're there at Red Rock, Oklahoma, uh, and uh, here I am in Denton, Texas, and I get... Uh, uh, I get the word that there's a news clip out there with uh, you in it and and a teammate. Can you describe what happened? Oh yeah, um, it's pretty crazy. It's still crazy to this day. Um, uh, one of the three killers, shock, uh, you know, excessive bleeding and obstructed airway. You know, one of my teammates was choking, and uh, I ended up performing the Heimlich maneuver, and um. It all started uh, back in, um, I think, I don't know, we was in the area tournament for on our way to state, and uh, we was uh, going out to eat after the game, and, uh, you know, the whole team said they wanted steak, so uh, and, uh, it was kind of late, so the only place that was open was the Chili's, so, uh, you know, we all go going to Chili's, you know, we all take our seats, and uh, I happened to sit right next to my teammate, who I ended up saving, so that was pretty crazy how that it played out, and, um, well, when, you know, we all got happened, our, it was like, it was, a, was he, was he able to tell you? Cause he's not able to tell you he's choking. How'd that, how'd that play out? Uh, he, he ended up tapping my leg, just tapping my leg, like, you know, a couple times. Just like a, like a tap on the shoulder, you know, basically, you know. Right. And nobody else there knew what was going on. Mm -mm. No, uh, the other end of the table had, you know, kind of like no idea what, what I was, you know, doing until I like, kind of like started really yelling at Trey, you know, right. telling him, you know, cause I was, uh, the first thing I did to try was just hitting him on the back. Right. And that was my first step, you know, first, you know, response to this situation. And then, uh, when that didn't work, I tried the Heimlich maneuver and, uh, it didn't work the first time. So I went back to my, uh, first try, you know, and, and he tried to, uh, you know, grab the piece of steak out of his throat, but it really, it wasn't working. So I tried the Heimlich maneuver again and uh, it was very, it was successful. On the Thank God. Second. Sure. Well, and, and since then, uh, so. you've had a lot of time to think about uh, that. And, and uh, how does it make you feel? What's it make you think about that early training that you had? Um, it made me really thankful for my training. You know, uh, besides the San Marcos camps, we also held our own camps at the tribe. And uh, I went to all of those. And, you know, we did a uh, we did Heimlich maneuver training and uh it really, really paid off, and I'm really thankful for it. That that is super. Well, congratulations on 
on doing that and being that. And congratulations to your friend that, uh, you know, he happened to be sitting next to a, a young man that had had a lot of good training. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's come back for a second to uh, when you came out of the 2017, 2018 uh, uh, training at uh, you, uh, there in, uh, uh, in San Marcos at the Texas uh, School Safety Center training. Um, you and who, who was with you that came back and what did y'all do? I mean, cause it was like, you took it and turned it into something fantastic. And I say you, man, I think so much about James Flair, who is the emergency management and kind of the de facto, uh, godfather of preparedness there in the, uh, at Oto, Missouri. Uh, and, uh, and I think he had a vision and that y'all had a vision and that maybe it was a shared vision because things really got rocking after that. What happened? Oh, yeah. Uh, we were basically like, uh, he basically just sent us there. Like, I don't want to say guinea pigs, but uh, we just wanted to like go out there and check it out. You know, he wanted to see uh, what we could learn and what we could bring back to our community, you know. And uh, well, that's what we did. You know, we told him it was, you know, fantastic. Uh, the people there were amazing. The instructors were great. Um, and, you know, we, you know, we took that back and we told him. And then we uh, did our best, our very best to, you know, outreach to other tribes and uh, get other people to go. And that's what we did. Right, right, right. Well, and the next thing you know, you had you built one in your own backyard there at Red Rock. Tell me what's happened with that. And and let me just say there was one other step I remember. Uh, James LeClaire working with at at that time uh, Oklahoma Homeland Security's uh, Roxy Beal, who worked with I think uh, Norman Emergency Management's David Grizzle to do a cert uh, train the trainer. For you and your sister and uh, the Cahaga girls, uh, and uh, I think I think that was it. Maybe a couple of other folks that were not tribal, uh, and I think that moved you on forward uh, towards what you were going to do in Red Rock eventually. Is am I calling it right? Yeah, that's that's very very correct actually. All right. So, so tell me what you did when you got back after that. What what did you do in Red Rock? Yeah, uh, like I said, that first year was just you know just see if we get get other people to come we didn't really uh present a lot because you had to kind of make a presentation there and uh, ours was just you know we're gonna go back and spread the word to our tribe and our tribal community that second year that we came at the one that you're talking about um we, that's whenever we got the idea let's do our own camp you know let's get this let's get the start on tribal land you know let's just bring it back to our community where you know it's like not let's it's really kind of far away from a lot of urban areas and uh, that's how a lot of tribes are. So, and you know, it's I think it's a lot better for you know, whenever other tribes invite other tribes to do things together, we work together to better our communities. So that's what we did. That's where the whole idea came from. Was that second year, and um, then when we got back, uh, James said, "You know what? Let's have you guys teach. You know, let's let's not hire. You know, uh, you know, maybe other instructors. And we did hire a couple of other instructors. And uh, then he was like." let's get you guys certified to teach because he was, he was just all for it. And so that's how he connected us to Roxy. And then, um, you know, uh, dang, yeah, I can't David, remember. Like Mr. Yeah, Grizz. Yeah, David, David Grizzle. Yeah. 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 David Grizzle. Yes. And uh, yeah. then when we got there, you know, we just completed the whole course and uh, he was also a great instructor. And um, then we got, then we taught there and um, actually I taught a lot there in, during like uh the first camp and then the second camp i taught i kind of uh delegated with my other instructors mm -hmm. right. but yeah it was all really really great what do you get what kind of feedback do you get from the other tribal uh, youth i mean uh, because because i'll just say you know we just did this what a week and a half ago and and i saw you and i saw your sister i saw marlene i saw brie uh, uh kihaga and everybody, when you guys get up and start talking about what you know and, and talking them through what they need to know, it, it, they are really clocking on you more than they're clocking on another teacher, more than they're clocking on some, some guy who came in from FEMA Region 6, more than they're clocking on most adults because they know who you are. You've, you're setting an example. Um, 
did you feel that? Is it something that uh, you were you were noticing as well, or is it something that I I just was in that rare <clears throat> area where I got to see it? Yeah, I kind of noticed that too. You know, I think it's because you know I'm kind of like in the same age group, and you know, uh, I've had some real life experiences, and you know, I got to share that, and uh, I think that's really where it comes from. You know, just from the experience that I have and uh, being able to really uh, resonate and you know, uh, kind of like share you know share something you know uh with uh, like other people in my age group and you know they can like understand that because like I'm, I'm around the same age as them uh, yeah you just a few years ahead of, of uh, most of them what, what were your favorite things to teach um the first aid I really like teaching first aid and um search and rescue I like teaching search, search and rescue also and 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 you and and your your fellow instructors handled it masterfully. I would like to ask you, as a guy that now has has speaking of rare air, you know, you've been on the side of having to sit through all this uh, training, and then you've been on the side of providing the training. Uh, I and and I've I've kind of been in that area myself because I'm not, you know, typically I'm more of a scout. I go and I see folks and say you know, who could do this, you know, who uh, would probably be able to come and help out here, help out there, or, you know, this has been done here, that's been done there. I, I, for you, but I always have some sort of opinion on, well, you know, if I were doing it, maybe I'd condense here or sorry, cut this a little bit here. When you're dealing with youth preparedness uh, and, and young people with this long course, are there parts you wish you could keep and there are there parts you wish you could kind of trim or what's what's your feeling there? Um, you know, overall, I think the whole course is, you know, great as it is, you know, but um, you just really just need to just engage with the class, really, because I sat, you know, like you said, I've been in the trainee part, you know, sitting in the chair and then I've been in the trainer part where I'm up speaking. And uh, that's really in, in a short in a kind of a short span also. So it like kind of put me in a good perspective. And uh, I really think the whole course is just, you know, as, you know, as we need it, as we need it, you know, it's really great, reliable information. But, you know, I think it's just really just, the, you know, getting up and uh, engaging with the class, you know, maybe asking questions every, you know, like every 10 minutes, like every other slide and uh, yeah. maybe giving prizes for people to answer those questions, you know. And uh, yeah. I think it's really just, you know, engaging with the class, you know, because, uh, um, cause, you know, it's a lot of lectures, you know, and you're, yeah. you're really sitting in one spot yeah yeah I've, I've i've seen it and, and i do know exactly what you're talking about because i remember as you you uh were doing your part of it I, I noticed you were slinging chocolate out there to uh folks that were answering questions and i thought that that, that fella has a has a grasp on getting attention and keeping attention so uh, good good on you uh well, what do you uh, what do you see for your future? Do you have uh, any plans that involve uh, a cert or emergency management or or leadership roles or what what it, what are you seeing for you right now? I know I know that you're uh, uh, you know years away maybe from having to make such uh, grand decisions, but uh, uh, are you having any feelings one way or another right now? Um, uh, I was actually um I think cert really uh helped me get this, but uh, I was actually uh, named a, a Gates Scholar. Uh, I got the Gates Scholarship. It's uh, 750 students out of a pool of 55,000 uh, in uh, other young applicants. And uh, I was selected as, you know, one of those 750 to uh, get a like full tuition, you know, full ride to any college that I chose. So I'm gonna be uh, getting a Bachelor's of Science at uh, Colorado State University in Pueblo. And um, that's where I'm gonna go further my education. And uh, CERT really helped me with that. You know, uh, it was there was a long interview process. It was like a four or five month long um, whole spill of interviews, uh, essays, uh, Zoom calls, and um, it really got me to where I am now. You know, uh, you know, I got to talk about how I brought stuff back to my community. And uh, how I was a young leader in my community, and uh, it really helped. So I really thank Sir for that. That's fantastic. I am so I, I am so thankful that, to hear that. And and you know, even from as I mentioned, I'm, I'm on the scout side. So uh, what I've been able to do is watch you and watch your sister and watch your friends and your cousins as you've moved through this process. 
and I've, I've been so proud this whole time just to be able to watch and see what you're doing because it's it's obvious that it's paying off at home in the in, in Red Rock area and the tribe and the surrounding tribes. Uh, but it it looks like there's there's a lot of ground to cover and it looks like you're 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 headed the right direction. So congratulations and thank you for letting me be, be along for the ride because it's been a great ride. I think there's many, many miles to cover and I'm I'm anxious to see how you go. Thank you, Bill. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, talk to me about uh, where you think the youth preparedness will stay with the uh, OTO. What do you What do you see happening for uh, <clears throat> for James and for uh, your your colleagues there in, in the Red Rock area? Uh, I see it growing. You know, uh, as it is now, it's growing very steadily and maybe exponentially. You know, because uh, we uh, have like a lot of tribes that came to that last one. You know, Ponca's. Uh, more Otos and a couple Kiowas and, uh, you know, just surrounding tribes, you know, in the area. And uh, I see it just growing steadily, you know, and uh, that was a new building that, that that we were in. Also, James himself has his own emergency management building. See, so uh, we're kind of like expanding just for emergency management and uh, kind of just preparing, you know, our tribe and trying to help other tribes, you know, you know, prepare for the disasters that, you know, that we can't, you know, foresee or that we can't, you know, like, don't have time for to prepare you until you know till it's there and then we gotta you know handle it as best we can right right well I, I see James I see yourself I see your sister uh, sisters I should say uh everybody there is kind of serving as as leaders and examples on what you can do with just a little bit because you're doing so much with so little I mean every, everything that you get you're able to turn into much more than it was when it got to you so, uh, you know, our, our hat is off and, and we, we stay thankful for the work that you've done that, that you and your family and James and, and uh, everybody has done and, and that what you're continuing to do. I got to cover one other part that I loved, uh, you know, and this is almost a side note, but it was it's not a side note. Uh, you know, when when we were there for this youth preparedness camp, the one you just uh, instructed at, you and Anais and, and Marlene Enloe and, and uh, Bree, um, when when we're there, you know, this is this is my third or fourth or fifth time to come back to Red Rock and be welcomed as 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 you know, just as hospitably as you could ever be welcomed anywhere. Uh, more so because not only was you know, the, we were able to enjoy the cultural aspects of the training. So you've got the, the dice game that's shown, the, the Oto dice game that, uh, that, that the uh, hippo lady came in and, and showed us how to play that. And also there's the, the sweat lodge. And uh, while, while peyote was uh, ingested, we were uh, instructed in the, the Native American church and the way that uh, peyote can can be uh, uh, utilized in the church and the sweat and the whole bit. And then on top of all of that, uh, you know, the, the traditional food that you and your family uh, kept serving and serving. Y'all did, y'all took on a lot of cooking during that. Uh, uh, I'd see you running oh, between yeah. instructing and cooking. And that was you, your sister's. Your, your cousins, everybody was back there, and Carol Lee, your mother, was uh, steadily bringing pots which way and not, and I, I, there was corn soup, there was steam fry, there was fry bread, there were all these things, um, and, and it just meant the world to those of us who do not live in, in uh, the Red Rock area, or we're not tribal, and we just felt like we were given a true gift of, uh, of a bit of a cultural exchange it was it was just a thrill and that's not my first time to have been there and every time i go uh to or come to see you guys i'm accompanied by other partners that uh from across the state or the region and everybody walks away thinking the same thing god the oto missouri have just given me such a gift something that i'll be thinking about and talking about for years and years and years so derek thank you very much uh not only for you know, what you've been known for most recently, saving a life, but also for your participation in the CERT training uh, from the standpoint of taking it 
and now becoming an instructor and a leader in it. And, and uh, thank you very much for sharing everything that you've learned. And when I say that, I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to your family. I'm talking to your, your, your partners, your tribe. I'm talking to everybody that has invested so heavily into preparedness there because you guys have set a great example and you continue to do so. Thank you for being part of Region 6 fabric of preparedness and thank you for doing what you do. Thank you very much, Bill. It's really, it's really not, it's really uh, great to just, you know, really uh, keep communicating with you. Like, as you said, you've been here the whole way and, you know, it's really great to just uh, keep you along the way and uh, you're a great guy. That about does it for this episode of the Hashtag R6 Prepares podcast. Please give us a like on our YouTube channel and subscribe there if you will. And, uh, likewise, please follow us at Hashtag R6 Prepares on Twitter. Take care of you and yours, and we'll talk to you next time.